Coasters and welcome to day nine of 12 Days of Coasters. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to make this cat coaster. We're going to be using a half double crochet for our circular base and then we're going to be on the final round adding the lovely little ear detail and the tail detail. So for this I'm going to use a double knit However, I'm going to use, oh, a new one to the series, Drops Muscat Mercerized Cotton. Um, I know we normally use Sheepy <laughs> Soft Fun um, or Sedan Number One, but this is also one that I've been really enjoying. Um, and the fact that it is a mercerized cotton gives it a really nice, um, lustrous finish. Very beautiful. I'm actually going to be using the same color um, as this one so that I can make a matching pair. I'm also using a 4.5 hook, um, however a 4 will work absolutely fine. Um, and again, if you wanted to size up or size down your yarn on your hook, obviously please feel free to do so. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a magic circle and I will pop a link up here to a more in-depth um, in explanation of how to create a magic circle. However, I'll just quickly go over how I um, make mine. I place my yarn over my fingers and I wrap it around the back like this, bringing it back over. And then when I wrap over here, I cross it along the front and pinch it with my ring finger here. I then take my hook going underneath this one, which is the bottom strand picking up the one at the back, which is the top strand, by turning my hook and pulling it through like this. At this point, you want to let your ring finger let the yarn pull through so that you can create this kind of A shape. It's at this point then you want to twizzle your hook around to create a crisscross. Can you see that, like a teardrop? And then essentially all you need to try and do is pick up this yarn here and pull it through so pick it up, twizzle it so that you can nicely, can you see, pull it through, creating yourself a slip knot around a ring, which is how we're going to place our set of eight stitches in the center. And all it means is we can pull it nice and tight um, so that we don't have um, any gap in the center of the coaster. So you're going to place eight half double crochets into the magic ring. So we're going to yarn over, we're going to insert into that ring, yarning over and pulling back through, yarning over and pulling through all three loops on our hook to create our first double crochet in our magic ring. If you are struggling with the magic ring and you do want to make this coaster, you can simply chain four slip stitch to the first chain to create a little ring of chains and then all you need to do is place um, these eight half double crochets into that central chain. It will still create a circle. So our second half double crochet and then three. So yarn over insert, yarn over pull back through, yarn over pull through three. So we're going to create eight half double crochets in the center of a ring. So if you've crocheted circles before, you might have crocheted them with a single crochet, which often um, starts with a six in the center. If you've made my um, circular flat coaster, which uses the double crochet, um, oh, these have got a little bit smaller, haven't they? I think I've just tightened my tension. Don't worry about that, guys. Um, yes, if you've used my um, yes my circular coaster, you might have used um, the double crochet, which we start with ten in the centre. However, the half double crochet we start with eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've actually overshot, which is uh, unusual. Normally, you don't quite have enough. So now that we've got eight, one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All we're going to do is we're going to close our circle a little bit by pulling on this yarn here. I'm not going to pull it all the way just yet. I'm going to close it until I feel I can comfortably take my hook and insert it into the first stitch that I created and slip stitch. And it's at this point I'm now going to give the tail end a really nice um, yank, if you like, and uh, there we go. Perfect. So now we're going to chain one. We're always going to chain one 
every time we slip stitch to join the row. Chain one is not going to count, it's simply going to allow us to get our height up to place our next series of half double crochet, so that's all it's for. I never count my turning, well I rarely count my turning chains, I tend to find it just works better for me. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to double these eight stitches into 16. So we're going to go straight into the same place that we um, slip stitched and we chained out of, which is this stitch here. And we're going to place two half double crochets into that stitch. And then we're going to place two half double crochets into the following stitch. And you're going to carry on all the way around placing two half double crochets like so my cat's joined us to clean next to us so we've got slurping back in fact i'm going to have a quick sip of my tea while we complete round two <clears throat> pardon me i'm drinking a um, mint choc chip tea it's very nice i'll um, pop a link it's a um, bird and blend if you watch my podcast you'll know that i'm a really big fan of their teas lovely crocheting tea that's what we do so yep so two half double crochets in every stitch all the way around whilst we listen to Moomin clean herself it probably won't get picked up on the camera so you'll be saved from that ambient noise <laughs> okay so it's always a good idea to count because you're going to think that you're going to be wanting to place a stitch in here and you're very likely not because if we look we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, we've got 16 stitches and the reason for this is that um, when we slip stitch and we create them it kind of creates a little space because it pushes the stitch over a little bit but all you need to simply do is just in the process a half double sometimes I do pop a little extra stitch in or um, I kind of ignore it um, either way as long as when you join it and you pull it together there we go so we've done here we are round two chain one and leave it at that and place a half double crochet in exactly the same space now, if you're familiar with circular crochet, this next bit will be a doddle. You'll just want to skip ahead probably to the ears. However, for um, those new to um, the concept of a circle, we've got eight in the center, which means we're always going to be placing eight increases all the way around. And we place those increases um, evenly distributed all the way around. So think of it as like a piece of, um, think of it as like a cake or a pie cut into eight slices and every slice we will be increasing by one stitch. So if we take this first section, we had one stitch and we put an increase in it to take it to two stitches. Now we need to take those two stitches and we need to take them to three stitches. And how we do that is we simply place one single crochet into the first stitch or half double rather because we're working half double and then we place two half double into the next stitch so that's one stitch and then an increase and then we do that again so we place a half double into the next one and then we place two into the one after and we just do that all the way to the end so one half double into the next one and two into the next one to create an increase one half double and an increase. I'm just going to give myself a little bit more yarn. Mm, it does feel really nice this yarn. So one and then an increase. One and then an increase. and then an increase my belly's rumbling I'm trying really hard not to have a mince pie for Christmas for Christmas I mean have a mince pie for breakfast <laughs> I 
um, because my Christmas food order has arrived. So um, yes, already. So let's have a quick recap. We've got a one and a double. So we're going to count in groups of three. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21. Perfect. So we've got a couple more to go to 22, 23, 24. And there we are, complete. So once we've reached 24, we simply slip stitch into that first stitch to close our circle. And then we're going to chain one. And we're going to place a half double crochet straight into that first stitch. So the pattern um, carries on exactly the same as before. We've now, we're now going to take a group of three stitches and we're going to turn them into four stitches. And we're going to do this by placing one half double crochet in the first stitch, one half double crochet in the second stitch, and then our increase. So we're increasing. I'm just gonna move my mug because I can hear it clinking as I crochet. Um, so there we go, we've placed a single, a single, and when I say single, I don't mean single crochet, I mean single stitch. I don't want you to get confused. This is a half double crochet pattern. But we're placing a single stitch, a single stitch, and a double stitch. So this round is just to remember that we place two single stitches and then our increase. Two single stitches and then our increase. And that's essentially how a circle is, is created. Every round you will increase, which is a little cat hair in my uh, <laughs> crochet. Yes, every round you'll increase um, the number of single stitches you place in between your increases by one. And you can go as big as you want. You could crochet something that fits into um, your lounge. You know, I've seen really large rugs made in this way, but for today, nice little cat coaster will do the job quite nicely okay so do single stitches if you are new to crocheting I would suggest you take a look at your row and check that you can identify and spot um, what an increase looks like and you can say okay here's the base I can see I've got two stitches coming out of that because you might find your hair and I've, I've just put this down to get some more yarn and I'm thinking oh okay where am I at okay I can see that my last but one stitch here was my double so I've placed one so I need to just place another one and then another increase that's really quite important I'd say is um, learning to recognize your stitches and what they look like okay I'm nearly at the end of my round hopefully you are too I've got one more set, so one single, one single, and my double stitch brings me nicely back to the beginning. And I should have, all being well, 32 stitches. 24 plus eight, 32. So I'm going to count in groups of four, counting after my double each time. So four, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. And then I'm going to single, um, it's not single crochet, slip stitch to the first stitch. And there we have just completed our fourth row. So we have two more rows to take us up to um, an outside stitch count of 48 stitches. So single, um, Gosh, it's saying the wrong thing a lot today, isn't it? So chain one and place your single crochet straight into that first stitch. And then you're going to place another half double crochet into the next two stitches along the row because for this round, we'll be placing three single stitches followed by our increase. So three half double crochets into the next three stitches a bit too much of that stitch there three and then we place our increase 
So please do let me know if you've been enjoying the 12 days of coasters. I can't believe we're already on day nine. It's going to be over in a flash, isn't it? And then Christmas is going to be here and I'm going to be uh, wondering what I'm going to do with my next project. I probably won't want to crochet a coaster for a while. <laughs> Although I do really want to make some of the more of the triangular ones from um, day, I can't think, six maybe, six or seven. Um, because I think they would just go really lovely um, in my lounge at the moment. So yes, definitely some of the triangular ones. So I'm going to increase. So don't forget we're placing three, um, three stitches followed by our, our increase all the way around. Um, the positive response from everybody has just been overwhelming and um, for those of you that have commented on my videos, oh, honestly it's an absolute joy to wake up in the morning and see such wonderful comments about um, my videos because I do, um, you know, I do sometimes worry um, that they're not as polished as they could be. I might say the wrong word or I might actually stitch, um, I might actually crochet wrong and have to go back and correct it or, you know, the cat turns up or the doorbell goes. Um, but. I have had some really, really lovely comments, so thank you ever so much um, for those of you just to say, you know, that you've really appreciated um, kind of like the raw, un unfiltered um, approach to uh, to learning to crochet, so thank you ever so much for that. I'm just actually going to check, as I started counting, I need to check that I've got the right amount of stitches. Okay, so one, two, three and an increase, one, two, three and an increase, one, two, yep. Oh, I've accidentally chained there. There we go. One, two, three. And my final increase is here. Lovely. And then I can join for my final round. And then we'll soon be ready to put the ears on. Woo! How exciting. Okay, so for our last row, chain one. Place your first half double crochet straight into that stitch. And then what you're going to do is you're going to place half double crochet into the next three stitches along like so so we've got one two three four four single stitch half double crochets followed by our increase so that we're taking five stitches and we're turning it into six so that we can end up with a row around with 48 on the edge so a single stitch, single half double crochet, half double crochet, half double crochet, and two half double crochets into the same stitch, creating our increase. So one, two, three, four. I need us a bit more yarn. I'll tell you what I am going to look forward to when um when I have a little bit more time after 12 days of coasters, um, certainly when I break up for Christmas, is I'm going to um, enjoy catching up on some crochet magazines because I haven't felt like I've actually read one in ages. Um, and I do, um, I, I have them on my, quite a lot of them on my iPad through um, different subscriptions and things. So um, yes, in fact, I don't know if any of you have watched my podcast, but I did. That noise is my cat, who's decided she wants to try and get in the cupboard. Come on, naughty, we're on the last row. People need to get their cat finished. Okay, so I've done my four singles, I'm on to my increase. Um, yes, if you saw my podcast, don't forget we're doing four singles and an increase. Yeah, four singles and an increase. Um, I mentioned an app called Readerly, um, which I have a subscription to not sponsored in any way I just really like sharing um, the fact that you can pay um, you know I think it's like 7 99 for me a month um, and you get access to all the magazines not just one magazine subscription and magazines can be pretty pricey and then if you don't end up necessarily reading them I always tended to feel really guilty if I had a magazine subscription and I didn't get around to reading them so um, yeah it's quite perfect that you can um, plus you can share it with your family you can make different profiles um, in the same way you can um, on Netflix and Disney Plus so we can all have our own magazine favourites and things 
um, and certainly my dad really enjoys a lot of the nature um, and the science ones and things so um, yeah check it out they do have a crochet magazine on there I can't remember which one it is I think it's inside crochet but it could be simply crochet don't quote me on that um, they might even have a couple and they also have a lot of other crafting ones so if you're into baking and sewing and or certainly obviously Christmas um, dishes to make there'll be lots of Christmas um, ones so it's worth even having a subscription for one month just to get access to all the Christmas um, you know the Christmas food recipes and then cancel so definitely check it out readily so uh, one two three four yeah okay nearly at the end I've just done my four I'm going to put my increase in here and then we get on to the ears which I know is obviously the best bit the bit we've all been waiting for so one two three four increase increase slip stitch caught a bit of thread on that slip stitch that's why it was a uh, tight if you ever find it's quite tight when you're um if you're a beginner and um, when you're pulling through you've probably just can you see i'd caught a little bit of thread underneath and it was pulling there we go Ta -da! thought there was another cat hair there yeah that is one thing you will uh, get if you have ragdoll cats is these coasters look beautiful and then about two weeks later they look like they've got wearing a, uh, a small fur gilet and <laughs> um, so we are ready to go and can we see we've got our now you will find if you're new to circular crochet that this seems to have taken on um, an octagon because it's obviously got eight sides and you've got these little points now this is simply because we've placed our increases in exactly the same place and all it's done is it's created that it is very easy to just reshape it and the thing about crochet is most of the time you will have to reshape your crochet a little bit it doesn't sort of crochet up and stay um, you know and hang or drape or sit how it is meant to and that's not an issue there are some techniques if you want to avoid this where you can shift where you're placing your um, your increases and I'll pop a link above to a video um, that shows you how to alternate um, to prevent this however for the purpose of this um, I don't particularly mind um, because in actual fact I quite like the fact that once we've added the ears and the tail on um, as you can see I've got obviously increase here it kind of gives it a little bit more of a cat body rather than being an absolute perfect circle I mean I haven't blocked this yet which would mean um, pinning it down and giving it a light spray with water and reshaping it but I really don't mind so let's get started on the ears and the tail if anyone is interested um, in starting to create their own patterns as well, I can actually share with you this lovely little diagram here, which is how I worked out how I wanted um, the ears to sit. So as you can see, I knew that I was going to use three stitches for the ears, pop some increases in and my tail, and I knew that I was going to do up to a 48. Also appears that I've been writing a recipe with some falafels and hummus above, so uh, I've only just noticed that. Um, but I will do a bit more of an in-depth video um, if you'd like, so pop a, um, a comment down below if sort of getting into sort of some simple pattern designs is something that you'd like. A good place could be um, we could create some circles and then we could think about how we edge them and the pattern that we would want to create and how we would go about um, working that out. Okay, so for the round that we create the ears on, we're actually going to be going back to a single crochet. It's just going to give us a slightly smaller stitch, and what it's going to mean is our ears are going to stand out a little bit more. So we're going to chain one, and then we're going to single crochet into that first stitch. And then we're going to place five more single crochets all the way along. So we've got a row of six single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, I need one more. So we're now going to create the first ear and this is made up of three stitches. Well, it's not made up of three stitches, it's actually made up of five stitches, but we're going to place them in the next three stitches. So in this first stitch, you're going to place a half double crochet and a double. So you're going to yarn over and insert. 
yarn over and pull back through to create a half double like we've been working the whole way around. We're then going to create a double. So we yarn over, pull back through, and then we close the stitch by yarning over and pulling through two, and then yarning over and pulling through two. If you are new to these stitches, I probably would familiarise yourself with them. Um, there's some links below to the double um, and the treble and the single. So the next one we're going to do is we're going to place a treble stitch. I don't use these very often, but they do create a nice tall stitch. And it's worth, um, definitely worth having a practice on this. If it doesn't come out how you like, just simply pull it down and have another go. So you want to wrap, wrap your yarn around your hook two times before you insert it into the next stitch, yarning over, pulling back through. And what you're going to end up with is four loops on your hook. Very similar to the double, you're going to be yarning over and pulling through two loops at a time. But it just means that rather than doing it twice, like you would with a double, we'll have one more set to close. And there you have placed your treble. Now we're going to place into that third stitch along, closing the ear, a double and a half double. And then I would place a single into the next stitch. And then we can take a look, you can see, and then pop that down. Now it might look a little bit squashed, what you need to do then is just give it a little bit of a shape and there can you see we've created a nice little ear made up of a half double, a double, treble, a double and a half double. So three different sizes of stitches going up to the centre and coming back down. So in between the ears we need to place four single crochets. So we've already done one. So two, three, four. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place another ear here. So we're going to place a half double, followed by a double in the same stitch. Then we're going to place a treble, so that's yarning over twice before we go in, yarning over through two, yarning over through two, yarning over through two, a double in the next stitch, followed by a half double, and then and into the next stitch we'll place a single. Take that out, and then you're just going to want to have to pop it up, and there can you see, we've got our our nice little cat ears, very lovely. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place six single crochets. So we've already placed one, so two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to place an increase, so we're going to place two double crochets here. Um, not two double crochets, I do apologise, you're going to place two single crochets, a double stitch. You're then going to um, single crochet seven more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now it's time to create our tail. So the way that we are going to um, create this is we're actually going to chain um, 20. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, I've done quite a long tail on this one because I wanted a little bit of a longer one. I'll show you, here we go. Now this is a tail, which I think I only used 15 with. So it's completely up to you. If you only want to go with the 15, let me just have a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and I will have created one extra at the end, yes, so 15, but I'm going to do one with 20 in this one. You're simply going to single crochet into the second chain from the um, hook, which if I 
just spin it around there we go and so single crochet into and it's hard to hold it up with your cat dangling on the end so I popped it on the table and it's just a case of single crocheting all the way back along the table I would employ a little bit of patience because single crocheting along a chain is um, is a little bit fiddly um, the tail will curl up that is the effect that we would want <laughs> as it is a tail just going to get myself a little bit more yarn and I'm going to crochet all the way along now the cat coaster with it being made in half double crochet does have a very clear front and back because of the way the back of the half double crochet stitch looks so we want to make sure that when we've crocheted all of our single crochets back to the base of our cat that we are actually joining and carrying on along the wrong the right side because when you're you're creating a chain um, and a tail off um, a larger piece it can be very easy to kind of get it twizzled round and not be joining back on the right side um, so I know that this is my right side um, a good way to um, take a look is actually the back of the half double crochet creates very clear circular lines can you see because of the way it has this bar on the back of the stitches so very very different front and back can you see so I know that when I've done my tail like so here all I want to do is single crochet back into the same place the tail comes out of so here's the single crochet and then we chained off it so we're going to place it straight into the same place which will give us actually another sorry I've heard off camera then um, give us another double at the base of our tail and then we're going to place eight single crochets all the way along the bottom of the cat so two three four five six seven eight we're going to place an increase so that's two singles into the same stitch and then we're then going to place another seven two three four five six seven and then we're going to place an increase here now I've got a prime example of the fact that I have actually got one stitch left over now I'm not going to bother trying to work out whether or not I've missed a stitch in my pattern I suspect I possibly have um, when I came to do my tail or something but realistically we're on the last row and this is a great example of place one more stitch into that stitch slip stitch and simply forget about it and do not worry because it does not automatically alter the shape we've, oh, there we go we've still got very much our little cat coaster we've got our tail which quite nicely pops up the side we've got our ears which I'm going to shape and point with just a little bit of a spray water and there we have a cat coaster day nine complete oh did I show you I finally got my nails painted um, because I obviously never have them done and I'm always envious of other um, youtubers with pretty nails and um, creating crochet so thank you ever so much for joining me on day nine to make this cat coaster um, if you do make it I'd love it if you could tag me over on Instagram at crocheting tea um, I share everything to my stories that I get tagged in um, and I love to see your work I'll see you back for day 10 of, oh, day 10, not long to go, 12 days of coasters. Um, hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is live. Happy hooking and I'll see you soon. Bye.